Okay, um, so hi, my name is Erin and I'm a third year PhD student in sociology. Um, I am also a tutor for Understanding Race and Colonialism and also Intro to Queer Studies. Um, I have taught um, both online during the pandemic and also in person during the pandemic. Um, I have several reasons why I am striking. Um, of course, I think I've been striking um, both in solidarity with um, older academics who are having their pensions cut. Um, I say that I'm striking in solidarity because I have no pension. The reason why I don't have a pension is because I cannot afford to have one. I cannot afford for USS and the university to take a certain percentage of my pay every month to put into my pension because I need that money um, for basic sustenance like paying the rent and getting food and whatnot. Um, I'm also striking because the university doesn't really care about us tutors. I'm, a, I'm on a guaranteed hours contract so the university pays me by the hour. And while that sounds pretty cool, because we do get about between 16 to 18 pounds an hour, and that sounds like it's way above um, living wage, the university also decides for me what I can claim hours for. So for example, if I have four groups of tutorials that I do a semester, I'm only allowed to claim 10 hours per week um, for those four groups. And this means that any kind of work that I do that exceeds that 10 hours for tutorials um, would be essentially unpaid, right? So the HR, like HR would look through our e-time, which is the system that we upload like our pay claims for, right? And we do this every month. Um, the university actually really doesn't care uh, about, you know, whether or not we are paid on time. There's been a lot of instances, instances where my peers have not been paid on time. They sometimes don't get paid like for months on end and it will be like, you know, we'll be chasing with HR saying like, why you're not paying us and whatnot. And, you know, they just cannot be arsed <laughs> uh, about it. I think there's a lot of reluctance to really respond adequately and substantively to the kind of grievances that like tutors have but anyway so so that's why I'm striking um, as a way to show that we are not dispensable we are not just um, replaceable like a replaceable army of um, uh, yeah precarious workers um, I want to be valued for my labor I want for my labor to be meaningful and how this ties in with students is that, um, so I'm not sure if you've heard of this phrase, like your learning conditions are working conditions. And so um, if the university doesn't give us this sort of resources and amount of time um, to be able to teach and prepare classes properly, we are, many of us are caught in this situation where we either have to choose between doing unpaid labor, but then being a better tutor, or we work to contract, um, but then students eventually suffer for that. So a good example would be the amount of money we're getting paid for marking. So let me just pull out the numbers to make sure that, you know, it's accurate. So according to SPS um, marking rates of pay, you can find this on the SPS website. For a 2,000 word essay, we are being paid 45 minutes to mark. Now, 45 minutes to mark a 2,000 word essay is first and foremost not enough. Um, oftentimes, we end up having to skim through, and this is if you're wondering why your feedback is so you know, inadequate, sometimes it's just because we simply don't have enough time to mark. Now, it also means that like, for 2,000 words, between 2,000 and 2,999 word essay, like the word count, if we get paid 45 minutes, it means that it's less than, it's not even, I can't remember, like, 
it's less than an hour, right, that we're getting paid. So it's less than like maybe 16 pounds, right? And it really just doesn't add up the amount of time that we, first and foremost, that we are, that we need to, to mark, but also, you know, it's just really not enough money to pay rent and to proper, properly sustain ourselves. Um, you know, I'm not sure if you know about like lecturers having to sleep in tents. That was, that was a, an article in The Guardian, right? So I think there are many intersectings of issues here, first and foremost, that the university is not paying us adequately, but also that the university kind of limits the amount of money that we can claim for our work. And this means that, you know, if we don't want to do unpaid labor, which no one should be doing, then we end up having to sort of limit ourselves and the amount of feedback that we can give students when we are marking, right? Or for example, if we are getting paid only like 10 hours for four tutorial groups a week, it means that, and the university also has like a cap on like the amount of time we should be spending like preparing for tutorials, so it's 35% of the time. Now, if it's 10 hours and it's 35% of the time, then it's three and a half hours that we spend, that we have to prepare for tutorials. So that includes reading the readings, listening to the lectures, and preparing, thinking of discussion questions, coming up with a lesson plan. And if you find that you can't read your readings within like, say two hours or something, imagine doing having to do so much more in three and a half hours and knowing that if I go up, and beyond the three and a half hours, I'm not getting paid, right? Um, I feel really disappointed and, um, to be frank, like um, an existential sense of despair for the three days that I was on the picket line and every time I saw students crossing the picket line. And what really strikes me, I think, is the insistence of students in crossing the picket line. And I know that there are a lot of students who are in solidarity with us, and I really, really appreciate that. We really do as a community. But I just wanna quickly talk about what it means to us when students cross the picket line. It means that there is a lack of recognition that we are the ones who have been, we are the ones who care about your education the most. We are the ones who prepare tutorials. We are the ones who come up with different pedagogical ways to like ensure that you learn better, right? That you can interact with your peers better, that you have a good discussion and from a good discussion, you really get to interrogate and, and, and better understand what those readings are for. And when I see students crossing the picket line, it just means to me that all of that care and concern and effort that I put into planning my tutorials and giving feedback to students and talking to students and stuff, all of that work is just not being recognized by the very students who I do in-person teaching with, right? And considering the pandemic, where most of the tutorials are in person. Your tutors are literally the face of the, uni uh, the university, right? Your tutors are literally the only people that you get to see in person. And they, I know it doesn't seem like it, and a lot of students may scoff at this, but we risk our lives. We risk getting COVID to teach in person, right? And on, a, on any given Thursday, I meet more than 50 students, right? That is more than the cap that the university has in place for in-person teaching. And the chances of me getting COVID from that is quite high. You know, going into enclosed spaces, um, meeting, yeah, 50, more than 50 different people, back to back actually. So Thursdays are my really like, it's, yeah, anyway. And so whenever students cross the picket line, it just shows, like, it makes me feel like all of that work, all of that effort, 
um, just goes unnoticed, right? It's one thing for the university and the school, and I mean, my employer not to care about my working conditions because, you know, they are like for profit, right? They have like a profit like making imperative. But for my students to like not care about that really cuts deep just because it's not like we're not just service providers and if you feel like you are not getting a service that you've paid for i think the issue isn't about crossing the picket lines right there is a bigger issue which is that the university should not be a place where you have to pay an insane amount of money to get an education education should be available equal like yeah equally for for everyone right so why why is it that students have to pay that much money and in the first place students no matter how much money you're paying like for your tuition it's not like it's not coming to us right the university takes 99.9 percent of your tuition fees and uses it for some kind of vanity project you know on campus a vanity project that no one actually uses because they don't consult us to find out what we as students need right um yeah so i think that's it for me sorry for ranting <laughs>